everyone. My name is Ian and we're here to take a look at how to connect a projector to a computer. Um, some of us are able to use laptops in the classroom. Some of the classrooms provide laptops. Uh, knowing the steps of how to put it together is one of the most important parts. Number one, we always need power. What does that mean? That means you have to find out where the power source is in the room. Can I just set these up right where they are? Well, let's see, where is a power source? Where is a power source? Here is a power source. Is it close enough? Let's check. Here is a computer cord. Computer cord, yes, will be long enough. Okay, what about the cord that goes to the projector? Um, not quite. So we have a problem already. So make sure when you're setting it up in the classroom that you're in an accessible area. Luckily for this presentation, we have brought a zip strip or a multi-flow or whatever name you like to give it. So that will give us enough room in order to reach. So let's plug in our components. Make sure everything's plugged in. Okay, our two components are now plugged in. First, most of you probably already know where to plug in the computer. Here is a standard laptop. This computer, <laughs> it is on the side. On many computers, it's located on the back. Okay. Next, let's take a look at our projector. Here we go, it's on the side. Let's make sure we line it up right. And we got it plugged in. Okay. Next step. We are going to get the cord. This is the cord that's traditionally a monitor cord. What's going to happen is the projector is going to function as a monitor for the computer by projecting it on the wall. Here, it's color-coded, and most of them are. They're both blue. It says computer in one. If you notice, the shapes are a little bit different. In this one, the bottom's bigger. If I flip it over, of course, the top will be bigger. Make sure when you line them up that they're in the correct position. It also has ways to tighten it on the side. Next, we will do the same thing with the computer. Uh, on most computers, again, it's on the back. Make sure that you line it up in the right direction. Okay. So, we now have power. We now have both of them connected to each other. Now, we go to the next part. In order to connect sound, we will also have another cable. The cable may or may not have a green color on it. It gets plugged into the projector here, where it says audio in. We also have to connect it to the computer. On the other end, we have it over here. On this particular computer, it's up front, it's often on the side. We're going to plug it in the plug with the headphones picture. Not the microphone, but the headphones. And that's all we need for sound. Reverse the projector so it is facing the whiteboard for the presentation. So the first thing we'll do here is open up our computer and we will push the power button. While we're doing this, why don't we take a little look at our projector. Okay, let's see. Earlier we noted that the projector power light was on and it is red. Usually it will be green. So, this big button with the red circle around it, let's push it and it goes to green. Ah, now I can hear it has started up. And the level's a little off on this. We'll show how to play with that in a minute here. If we push in the button, we can just push and let go. The focus, of course, will make it clearer. The zoom will make it bigger or smaller. Let's play with the focus first. Oh, not in focus. Not in focus either. Just right. Okay, let's try the zoom. We can get smaller. We can get bigger. And the focus stayed adjusted, that's good. It automatically turned on all by itself. That doesn't always happen on some computers. 
When it doesn't, you have to play with the keyboard over here. This F4 button has kind of a TV picture on it. You can see kind of a TV in a picture. That's a screen. So in order to activate that, we would push function F4. So we could hold down function first and then push F4. Most of the time you won't have to use the buttons on top. You'll be able to just use the remote control. Um, after that, you just go onto the computer and choose whatever you want to do your presentation on. Now that we're finished our presentation, it's time to shut down. What we will do first is we can come to either the projector or use the remote. We're going to use the on standby button, which also off. I turned it off, but I can still hear noise. The fan is still running. The machine is still hot. We want the fan to keep running in order to cool it down completely before putting it away. Therefore, I am not going to unplug the projector right now. I'm going to give it a couple minutes to cool off. When the fan's done, I know it's finished. But while I'm waiting, I can go ahead and turn off the computer. So, I'm going to come around to my handy dandy computer here. And we will do start, turn off computer, turn off. Now that the computer has been shut down, we can close it. We can come to the back and we can unplug our monitor cord. Okay, that's what is also attached to the projector. But we are leaving the power cord in, remember. But we can, hopefully, <laughs> unplug the projector cord. Here. The fan is now off. It is finished. We are able to unplug it from the power. We will unplug it from here and unplug it from there. Please remember to include the cables when you are packing things up. It will not function without the cables. Again, for our laptop, same procedure. Make sure you wrap them up neatly is preferred. Doesn't have to be perfect, but in a little bit of order is always good. Don't forget that there is a remote control as well as the pointer pen. So, let me check and make sure I have it. Pointer pen, remote control, projector, computer. Okay, let me put down the little thing there. And our case. Well, it sounds like we have everything. And that is all. I hope that helps. Bye-bye.